Once upon a time in the 90s, there was a wrestling promotion that promised to bring the sport back to the good old days, whenever that may have been, and also innovate the sport like never before. But instead, it crashed and burned, thanks to severe overspending and an unrelated racketeering lawsuit against its owner. As requested by Peter Howe from the comments section, this is episode 2 of Defunct Championship Wrestling, AWF, the American Wrestling Federation. Now, Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret expertly broke down why the AWF TV show was, well, awful in a video five years ago. I suggest you check it out. But critiquing the matches and booking, etc. isn't exactly what I do. So let's look at how it started, how it went, and how it all fell apart. The American Wrestling Federation was the brainchild of Chicago-based businessman Paul Alperstein. Alperstein was the co-founder of Bank Card America, a sales company that sold credit card processing systems to merchants. He basically made money from money. If you're watching this, I'm sure you know the state of wrestling in 1994. WWF was starting to struggle creatively and financially, and WCW had just signed on Hulk Hogan, but their business still hadn't reached where it would be two years later. Maybe with the right vision and some fresh talent, a new company could take advantage and capitalize on an underserved audience that was tired of the big two. Maybe Paul could lead a revolution. Although the Wrestling Observer at the time would credit Tito Santana and Sgt. Slaughter with the promotion's formation and simply a mysterious financial backer, I was unable to find anything that confirmed anyone other than Alperstein was the company founder. It is interesting though that the TV show ends with copyright Cobra Clutch Corporation. The promotion was built around the idea of incorporating old school pro wrestling rules along with the introduction of four minute European style rounds. These were the style of matches that had been made famous on World of Sport in the UK 15 years earlier. Elberstein would also serve as the AWF on-air president. An inexperienced promoter putting himself on TV? What could go wrong? The American Wrestling Federation launched in November of 1994 with a TV taping in Chicago, featuring all the stars of Days Gone By. Greg Valentine, Coco Beware, Nails, Tony Atlas, and of course, Tito Santana and Sgt. Slaughter. As mentioned previously, the matches were bad, but at least the show looked pretty good. Production cost a reported $100,000 for the tapings, and I don't think that includes the 50 bucks they gave all the extras that they brought in for their live crowd. The promotion taped around 30 to 35 episodes of their Warriors of Wrestling TV show over two days with no TV deal yet in place. These tapings saw a tournament that ended with the crowning of Tito Santana as the AWF champion. It also featured several non-tournament matches in the marathon taping. Episodes finally began to air in February of 95 in some markets. In April and May of 1995, AWF ran a house show and held an additional TV taping in Chicago. This taping would see Tommy Rich and Greg Valentine win the tag team titles. And then they stopped doing anything for over a year. After the hiatus in the summer of 1996, they attempted more house shows this time in Oakville, Washington, as kind of a three-day casino residency. None of these shows drew attendance past the 600 range. By September of 1996, the company decided it was time to reset and filmed a new batch of TV tapings. These tapings featured an influx of additional big-name talent, like the Road Warriors, the Honky Tonk Man, and also Virgil. They even added Lord Alfred Hayes to commentary. At the same time as a Hail Mary attempt to bring eyes to the product and make the promotion profitable, AWF reportedly spent $4 million acquiring airtime on a number of major broadcast stations, including the CBS affiliates in New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia, along with UHF channels in San Francisco and Boston, among others throughout the country. The plan was obvious. Use those time slots as a platform to run house shows in these markets, and do quarterly pay-per-views. Even in the mid-90s, this was still how you made money. Use TV to drive folks to the live event or to order the pay-per-view. TV rights fees weren't nearly the profit driver that they are today. October of 96 brought house shows in Tampa, Florida and Anoka, Minnesota, with crowds of 500 and 250 respectively. During this entire time, unrelated to AWF, Alperstein found himself and his company, Bankcard America Inc., embroiled in a civil lawsuit against a former subcontractor, 
that at one point found Bank Card America guilty of violating the Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, aka the RICO Act. These are the types of charges they used to bring down the Mafia. This court case would go on for nearly a decade, and though we can't say for a fact, it must have put a huge strain on Alperstein's finances. In the end, the investment made in AWF was too high, and the revenue streams too low to ever turn a profit. The revenue streams were, if we're being honest, non-existent. As the old saying goes, best way to get a million dollars in the wrestling business is to start with two million. In December of 1996, AWF informed their syndicate stations that they would no longer be able to pay for the airtime. The majority of stations immediately dropped the show from the lineup. AWF also canceled all upcoming scheduled events. And that was the end of the American Wrestling Federation. For multiple reasons, it was pretty much dead before it even hit the airwaves. Poor investments, reliance on older stars and expecting them to adapt to a new idea, and of course not securing television distribution earlier. Even with its bankroll, AWF was never taken seriously as a threat to the big two. It wasn't all bad though. They did bring us the turnbuckle cam, which has been improved and is still implemented today. And they did win a couple of Wrestling Observer Awards for worst promotion and TV show of 1996. In 2005, Highland Entertainment released the Warriors of Wrestling DVD set, which was just a repackaged version of the original TV tapings. In the years following the closure of AWF, Paul Alberstein worked in the restaurant industry. He would be diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and have several other health issues. He would pass away in 2014. Tito Santana retained physical ownership of the AWF title after winning it back from Bob Orton Jr. and defended it on independent appearances from time to time. The American Wrestling Federation is just one of many promotions that failed to find its place in the ever-evolving world of pro wrestling. Who else should I cover for this series? Do you have any fond memories of the AWF? Let me know in the comments. I'm Scott from WrestleSpective. Thanks for watching.